At this point, y'all are hopefully familiar with Bun. It's a new alternative tool chain for JavaScript developers. Everything from bundling to running to installing your packages. Bun is a really exciting project. I've already covered it extensively. Make sure you check out my Truth About Bun video if you haven't already. A lot of important context that I think will help with this video. Anyways, what are we talking about today? So right now we're just talking about JavaScript. How is Bash involved? Well, crazy enough, the title isn't clickbait. Bun is competing with Bash now. And as crazy as that sounds, I do actually think this is a great idea. What the hell am I talking about? Well, let's take a look. The Bun Shell. JavaScript is the world's most popular scripting language. So why is it hard to run shell scripts in JavaScript? A fun fact not a lot of people know is that quick scripting like this was actually one of the original goals of Node. What if we could use the beauty of JavaScript's flexibility as a way to quickly run scripts on the server side? Despite that being a goal, Node became a much bigger bigger thing for running large JavaScript applications on servers, as well as the ecosystem that we use for managing all our packages and everything else associated with it, which is why this is such an interesting thing, because previously Dino tried to go back to this, putting the script in JavaScript in your terminal and in your servers. And I honestly, once again, feel like Bun has done a better job at Dino than Dino, because this is how I want to write my JavaScript CLI code going forward. They give examples of how these things work in stuff like Node, like importing spawn sync, and then calling all of these values for a command, collecting the status, standard out, standard error, and using this in your code base. There's also APIs for doing some of those things, like reading directories and all of that. But none of this is as simple as writing a shell script of ls star.js. Wouldn't it be really cool if we could just write this in our server-side JavaScript code? This is the goal of what they've done with the bun shell. Existing shells don't work in JavaScript for a bunch of reasons. They go in depth here. I love the fake Hacker News comment here. Shells are a solved problem. Hacker News commenter, probably. I'm almost certain if we go to the Hacker News for this release, someone said that. They don't work well in JavaScript. Why? Mac OS's ZSH implementation is different from Linux's Bash and Windows Command. They're all slightly different, have different syntaxes and commands. The commands available for each platform are different, and even the same command can have different flags and behaviors. I can't tell you how many times I've run into random scripts that I was promised by the internet would work great that just did not run in Zish, even though they ran fine in Bash. There's one performance flag one that I always forget about that only works in Linux Bash and doesn't work in Mac OS. I remember what it was, that it was annoying me recently. I'm sure I've all had the experience where we find a Bash script from like chat GPT or Stack Overflow. We go run it on our Mac and it just doesn't work because it has some weird expectations about arguments that just aren't a thing in Mac. We've all had to deal with that before. The problem here isn't just that you have to modify your script slightly to run it on Mac versus Linux, is that you don't have one file with code in it that runs properly everywhere. Writing cross-platform scripting is actually really difficult. And as a result, we often opt out of doing that in the shell and instead do it using packages that bind to random things per platform, like FS in Node has different bindings for all these different OSs, so you don't have to worry about what shell they're using. But what if we could just write shell code and it worked properly in all these different places? As they mention here, NPM solutions to rely on the community polyfill missing commands with JS implementations. Things like RMRF don't work on Windows. There's a package called RIMRAF that gets downloaded 60 million times a week just so you can RMRF on Windows. That's insane. Environment variables also don't work on Windows. You're going to notice a theme here. Windows is a bit of a, a lesser child when it comes to these things because Windows is the only non-Nix platform that's relevant at all. Unix, Linux, and Mac are all very similar cores. Windows is its own world, which is where on Windows. This bites me so often. There's another 65 million a week package. What? Also, an important detail, shells take too long to start. How long does it take to spawn a shell on a Linux, Linux x64 Hetzner machine? It takes about seven milliseconds to launch a new shell. Very annoying. If your intent is to run a single command, starting the shell can take longer than running the command itself. If you're running many commands in a loop, this gets expensive quickly. So imagine you ls to get a bunch of directories, and then you have a for loop that runs through each of those directories to check for a file. Now you have that seven millisecond block on every single one of those runs, unless you parallelize it externally yourself. Obnoxious. And now the core point, are all these polyfills really necessary? In the world of 2009 to 2016, when JavaScript was still relatively new and experimental, relying on the community to polyfill missing functionality made a lot of sense. But now it's 2024. JavaScript's on the server and it's mature and widely adopted. The JavaScript ecosystem understands the requirements today in a way no one did in 2009. We can do better. I really like the way this is written. The, the tone of this article is very good for a release. Introducing the bun shell. The bun shell is a new experimental embedded language and interpreter in bun that allows you to run cross-platform shell scripts in JavaScript and TypeScript. This is the important thing. When I first looked at this, I assumed it was just spawning out a shell the same way things did all the way up here with a child process where it was just spawning using whatever your native shell was. 
That's not what's happening here. Bun wrote their own shell scripting language. Very different and very, very interesting. Let me see here, the standard out, use await, dollar sign, ls, start.js. And yes, dollar sign isn't for jQuery. We'll be sure to try some fun things with it regardless. We await dollar sign ls, or if we want to get the string, we just await dot text. Cool. Now we have the text for whatever this command did. You can await a fetch call, get some response, and then you can throw that into gzip and get the standard out array buffer. Pretty cool. This is such an interesting thing because it's blending JavaScript semantics like awaiting a fetch and shell things like calling gzip and blending these things and using string templating to keep your inputs safe is really cool. The reason that they have this syntax is similar to why the Vercel SQL examples use the syntax. This is a template string literal, which means this is effectively calling a function where all of the things you put here are called as arguments and bun can then sanitize it so you don't break out of the command here, for example because you could just pipe or bar or semicolon and then do some nasty native stuff. But since this is interpolated, that can't happen. There's no way this response could return like RMRF and this would then run it. Really, really nice. I love these tag template literals. It's cool to see this becoming more and more normal. I just wish developers wouldn't look at this and immediately assume it's some sketchy thing that they shouldn't be touching. This isn't just embedding a string in a string. This is interpolating a string in a function. Very different, very important to know. They even call this out for security. All template variables are escaped. So here we have foo.js semicolon rmrf. I love, I swear I didn't pre-read this, just the exact thing I was saying. You pass the file name and now you're going to get an error. Cannot access foo.js rmrf because it will wrap this in quotes so that it tries to access this as one input instead of calling two different commands. Really nice that they handle that. Using bun shell feels like regular JavaScript. You can redirect standard out to buffers. So we made a buffer. That's that's wild. That's so wild. You can just pipe the output to a JavaScript buffer. What? I didn't know that. What? They're doing some crazy stuff. That's really interesting. You can redirect standard out to a file. This makes a little more sense. It's interesting you have to use their file like function to do that. Really cool, you can just pipe with standard bash and zish pipe syntax for whatever shell you're using. It's pretty standard. You can pipe to the escaped file output.txt. Or you can just pass it as a literal. That's good. OK, I was concerned you might need this, but it's cool that you have that as an option. You can pipe standard out to other commands, that I would hope. You can even use response as standard in. Yeah, that's really cool. So if you're curious what this does, this is allowing an input from an external source. So we're going to grep foo from this set of things. And it's going to be bar new line foo new line bar new line foo new line. So this would grep those two foo instances. Really cool. Wild stuff. The ability to send response objects that you've created like this into your commands is super cool. Someone mentioned in chat this makes FFmpeg way easier. Yes, I did a lot of stuff like this with Elixir where I would take a file, I would run it through FFmpeg, I would take the buffered response and I would pipe that to another FFmpeg process that would then stream it to Twitch. Those types of things are now not just like doable in JS, but trivial with this. Really cool stuff. I'm hyped. We also have built-in commands like CD, Echo, and RM, obviously. It seems like most of the common things you would do in a shell are supported. I'd love to see a doc that says everything, but most of the core stuff you would run seem to work here. It works in macOS, Windows, and Linux. They have implemented many common commands and features like globbing, environment variables, redirection, piping, and more. Really interesting. Designed as a drop-in replacement for simple shell scripts. In Bun for Windows, it will power the package JSON scripts in Bun Run. This is cool. It seems like a lot of their energy here is because of Bun for Windows and how little they could make things universal previously. They were probably already building a layer that would let them write one pile of code that would then work properly on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And they decided to make that this abstraction where now it's its own shell and you can write JavaScript code to command these layers. Really, really interesting. I should chat with Jared about what led to this. We chatted a bunch about it, but not why they did it. It's really interesting. I think we have to try it. Like, we do have to try this now, right? Y'all have probably looked at this dollar sign and thought, wait, isn't that a jQuery thing? Well, it's being used now. That doesn't mean I don't want to use jQuery here, though. So how would we do that? Well, first and foremost, we have to get a different name. So we'll there double dollar sign equals require jQuery. Sadly, jQuery needs a window to work. And since we're running on the server, there's no window object. So we need to make a DOM and then grab the window from it to bind here. Thankfully, there's already a package for this, JS DOM. So const. JS DOM, it's require JS DOM. And then we can make a new one and get the window from it this way. And we just pass that as the argument to the require. And now we have proper classic, everyone's favorite jQuery. I screwed up though. We don't want cons because we're we're blending old and new. So we're gonna ver our way through this. Let's use this. Well, we need some data, so let's grab it. 
everyone's favorite, dollar sign dot Ajax. We need to give it a URL. Oh, that's pretty smart. I'll autocomplete that part. I don't want to spoil things yet. So uh, we need to figure out what to do here. So now we have this response. Since we specified the data type here, we already know it's JSON, but that's cheating. We're going to delete that. Let's quickly see what we get back. We can log the result, but I also want to know the type. So let's see what we get from this. Fun run. That's a bunch of stuff, and it's an object. Interesting. Despite removing the JSON part here, jQuery is smart enough to recognize this JSON and parse it for us. So we're just going to have to turn that back to a string. That's totally fine. But I want to select a key off this. Let's say I want name. We could do the, the classic thing of like name, and it would be res.name. And sure, that works, but that's so boring. We have a whole separate dollar sign here we could be using. So let's have some fun. Const text equals await dollar sign. We need to do something here. We need to parse this JSON somehow. Thankfully, there's something else that will continue our naming confusion here with dollar signs and jQueries. It's a great thing called JQ, which is a shell package for parsing JSON and getting things out of it. We want the name, so we'll do dash r dot name. This will get us the name. But how do we actually get the JSON here? We're going to pass it the classic way with an echo. Echo, pass in, res, pipe. But wait, isn't res an object? Yes, it is. Good catch json.stringify res. And now we can, in the simplest way possible, grab the name key off of this response and then console.log name text. I forgot to do the dot text at the end here. And now if all works properly, we are grabbing the name value from the JSON blob that is passed to the echo. People are pointing out why console log when I can echo. Very fair point. Await echo text. Who needs console log anyways? Oh, I forgot to put name. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this incredible? Aren't y'all proud that we can blend so many wonderful technologies from jQuery to JSDOM to Bun to JavaScript to Bash to JQ? There are more technologies than there are lines of code in this file, and I'm very proud. This is wonderful. Am I looking at some kind of war crime here? <laughs> no, this is just your brain on JavaScript, my guy. This could have prevented so much of the chaos that we've experienced in Node, and we have to make more to make up for it. Anyways, I am very happy with my work here. I guess this is a better time than ever to wrap up. There are real use cases for this, like build scripts and so many other things you'd run in CI, but I just wanted to have some fun. If you want to see more ways to use Bun correctly, let me know in the comments, and I'll be sure to do that in the future. If you haven't already watched my Truth About Bun video, I'll pin that in the corner. Thank you guys again. Appreciate y'all a ton. See you in the next one. Peace, nerds.